Jeez. Howdy, howdy, friends and anglers. Uh, Dan Rice here, signing in from the River Feet Fly Tying Saloon. Uh, we have a super special guest joining us today. Super special. Super special. Don't tell anyone else we said that. Uh, it's our secret. All right, so this is Paul Zimmerman. Paul is a super experienced fly fishing guide, years of knowledge guiding the famous rivers of Colorado. Uh, we're real lucky to have him joining us here in Riverfeet, guiding the streams and rivers southwest Virginia and eastern Tennessee. Uh, so today we're gonna we're gonna try to talk a little bit about some of our small nymph patterns from Paul's Poor Man series, and then he's gonna tie up a couple for you. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm just gonna do a couple of patterns for you today, and sure, sure. Uh, one of them is a pattern I've been doing for geez, almost 15, at least 15 years. It's called my D rib betis. It's uh, yep. and so the second fly that I, I'm going to tie is a um, synthetic Hemingway synthetic quill Sweet. jig. Yep. Uh, it's a very effective pattern for sure. uh, when you're you're talking about your betis pattern. So we're mimicking a calabatus nymph, and when we see those things wet, they're tiny. Right. Right. And right. So we're fishing those on size 16 and smaller sure. hooks. You know, it's calabatus, and but you know, I'll I'll tie them up up to 14s. Like today, we're going to do a 14, I think, with a no a 16. But um, th it's also a just major betas patterns. You know, when you get into your your blueing olives or uh, you know any kind of PMD, you know, all those colors. You can use so many different colors of D rib yep. that to match. Uh, you know, so it's a mayfly, it's a betas, uh, could be a calabatus. Sure. You can actually use it for um, uh, like a midge crossover pattern. Right. You know? So you can, if I'm understanding, you can kind of take that same pattern and, and tie it different sizes, different colors to mimic different insects at exactly. different times of the year yep. and different water bodies. Yeah. Um, so with these two nymph patterns we're tying up today, now do these do these fish year round? I use them year round, uh, but I think a lot of these flies that I tie and I fish, I you know they're they you they're either a pupil stage or a nymphal stage or a Late emerger, early emerger stage. Oh, sure. So, so how do you like to fish these then? So we're talking clearly strike indicator, nymph fishing. Are you running inlines? You running bounce rigs? No, I'm just running a, a bobber rig and and putting a you know a lot of times where I'm doing it, I take a bigger a bigger jig and then drop off a some six x or five x tipping off of that. So when you're setting up that nymph rig, like what goes through your mind when you're trying to decide? how to fish at the depth you need to fish like are you adding split shot and yeah where just, are you putting the split shot you yeah. put it above the top fly you putting it right so i always um, tie uh, about 12 inches depends on the fly too you know i always tie about a 12 inch piece of tippet yeah. uh to the um uh to the leader yeah. and that's above that is where i put the split shot and usually i know what kind of split shot i'm using if i'm using a number one or i'm going to use an a b or if i'm fishing deep i'm using you know, double A B. Sure. But when they're when I'm fishing a like a say a, a jig, and then I'm fishing say a, an emerger, as the day goes on and I start seeing patterns, you know, seeing you know fish come up, my distance between my top fly, the, which is the the weighted fly, yeah. and the the little midge or the emerger gets longer. Sure. You know, I can go up to 20, 20 inches sure. longer because when you're swinging it. And you and it hits that end of the the swing of the of the your your drift. That emerger rises up, and that's you you get a lot of strikes at right. the end. You right. know, you know, boom! They're just Man. taking it for an emerger. So it's actually got movement. It's got life to it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know that's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the a purple uh, D rib betas today, uh, and you'll see the segmentation after we're done. Yeah. Uh, and then we're gonna do a Hemingway quill. I don't do any. I don't use any live quills anymore. Uh, I just love those Hemingway synthetic quills. Sure, I think sure. it has a nice little segmentation and it's easy to work with. Beautiful, man. Yeah. It's just it's bulletproof too. So, but today um, this this is one of my um, synthetic quill jigs. Um, today I'm going to tie it on a bigger hook than I usually do, just for the camera's uh, presentation. <clears throat> and um, this is a size 14, and it has a um, 2.8 millimeter uh, tungsten bead slotted on a jig hook. Um, I would go up to a 3.2 on this at least. Uh, I just had a 2.8 right here. Um, and so let's get tying. Um, and I'm going to use um, some fluorescent orange UV or a 
fluorescent orange 8 0 because I'm going to put a hot spot on the collar. So I just come in here and, and just kind of seat the hook or seat the bead. Going to grab that, and just kind of wrap that thread back, keeping kind of fairly touching wraps. It's not really important for this fly. And then we're going to cut that off there. And then uh, we'll wrap back a little bit more with some touching wraps. Make sure the bead is good. And then I'm going to take some about four or five pieces of Coke de Leon. That's the only natural fiber that I use for the, the tail anymore. Uh, just, just so I like the tails intact and they, I like to keep the tails, have some longevity of the tails. And I don't, I, one thing I don't do on tails is I make, I don't make them too long. I'm, this is going to be half of the, half of the distance, half of the length of the shank of the hook. So I'm going to make sure that, that as I wrap that back, you can see that tail is nice and short. It's just right there. I think it's a beautiful proportion on that tail. And then I just kind of wrap forward a little bit, kind of capture that the rest of that Coke de Leon just to kind of start that taper uh, and then just cut off the excess here. Like I said, you're going to cover all that up here in a little bit. I'm just going to wrap forward. Just kind of start my taper. Don't need to get, I don't like to, I don't like to get too thick. And then what I do on this thread always, it doesn't matter. I don't like, I don't like thick profile flies. And I do a, I just, while I'm getting my synthetic quill ready, I just have a counterclockwise spin on my thread just to flatten it out a little bit. And then, and then I take some of this synthetic quill. It's actually glued to this um, this card. And there's individual strips on this card, so each quill comes off. Boom, and you're right there like that. And it has a taper, so it's got a big end and a little end. And for bigger flies, like if I if I was doing a 20, which I usually do on these 18s and 20s, I would keep most of that little end. But I do cut it off at an angle, uh, just to kind of start it a little bit thicker. And then I orient it at 45 degrees to the, to the hook shank. And then I just wrap up. And then I got that synthetic quill just hanging there. And what I can do from here is I can create just a slight taper. You don't really want to bulk it up here because basically the taper is going to come from the, the thorax when I build the thorax with this. Um, I just want to kind of wrap forward. And then you take your synthetic quill gently start wrapping it forward. And look at that beautiful segmentation right there. I mean, and you don't have to mess with the regular quills. This Hemingway synthetic quill material is just so good. It, it's adhesive and it just lays down really beautifully and it forms that nice quilled body. And then I, I don't go all the way to the top. I kind of do a little bit here and there, but you know, it depends on my mood and my attitude and stuff. But look at that, look at that fly right there. Look at that, that body right here, that beautiful segmentation, that nice tail. Uh, and I, like I think I told you, is that I tie it with orange because I want to make a hot spot on here. And, you know, and then, so I'm going to wrap that, maybe just secure that, wrap it back to about the three-quarter mark right here. Just about there, about three-quarter. And then I'm going to take some uh, large, I'm going to take some large uh, opal tinsel. You can see that large opal tinsel and just tie that in really nicely. But today I'm going to use this super fine uh, olive dubbing because it's an olive body and make a kind of a slender one inch noodle. I don't like to get it too tight up here. I like to have a little bit of fishiness to it. Just do a nice little thorax. You don't want to go over you want to keep it. I'm just a slim tire here. I just like to tie stuff slim. 
Then you just go ahead and wrap that pearl tinsel over. Do a couple wraps here. And then I actually pull it back and do another couple wraps, kind of get that hot spot up here. Just a, not a, not a much. You don't want to over bulk it right there. And then you're going to take a little nip of that. And then uh, that's about it, you know. And then I, I basically don't I, don't, I don't know how to use a whip finisher tool. So I, I just whip, fin I have a finger whip finisher. And do a few whip finishes. And that's about it. I mean, when you're really rocking and rolling on this thing, it's a beautiful fly. I mean, it's just a, it's a deadly pattern. Uh, all right, today we're going to tie um, one of my flies in my Paul's Poor Man series. I've been tying this for, gosh, at least 15 years. Um, this is called, uh, I just call it a D-rib betis. Uh, you tie them a lot of different colors, a lot of different hook sizes. This is a 16 in here. It's got a tungsten, you know, a tungsten bead. This is a 332nd. I also tie them uh, as true emergers without beads. Um, but today I'm going to tie it in uh, purple. Uh, I love purple. Uh, and um, let's go ahead and um, get the get the thread started. And a lot of times, too, um, if I want to change the, the tone of the body, say if I'm using a like purple D-rib, um, I'll use a white underbody. But what I do is I just kind of wrap back to about the point of the hook. And I just take a, for these, depends on the size, but this is a 16. I'll take about 10 strands of black Darlon right here, some black Darlon. So um, I'm just going to lay it on the hook. When you first put this on the the hook, to do a counterclockwise spin on the bobbin, just so that the when you do capture it, that thread lays to the back. I tie that tail back to about right where the hook point should be, or would have been on there. And then um, I don't want a lot of bulk on this fly, so I just I just cut that off. And I cut the that darlon off, and and um, and uh, I just wrap forward. I'm going to take this. And I have a counterclockwise spin on that thread just to keep the body thin. I'm going to put a slight taper on here, but um, the taper is going to be kind of mostly with the thorax that I'm going to build. Uh, so I don't want too much. Uh, and then I'm going to take some small D-rib. It's purple. And it's going to be a, I don't know if anybody's worked with D-rib before, but it's just like midge tubing, except that it's formed like a D. And so now I'm going to take the D-rib and just start it in the front here, just capture it, just a nice loose wrap, and then I'll do a pinch wrap on here. And then I just keep it on the, with the flat part on the shank of the hook on the opposite side, on, on your side, the camera side of this. And I take it back to where that barb should be. And I come in here and I just pull that little bit extra on here just to make sure it's close okay and then I'm going to wrap forward in here well, as I wrap forward I'm going to just actually do the just a little bit of a taper on here not much I'm going to stop about the three-quarter mark you know you don't then you just take your D-rib and wrap tight wraps and look at that segmentation and you just give it a pull you don't want to pull too hard but you're just pulling enough to make sure that that's tight and you get to just about an eye length in back of the the bead and the um, and then you just capture it and cut it off here Okay, and then I just wrap back a little bit to the three-quarter mark. I'm going to use um, some medium opal tinsel. I'm going to take this, tie that in. There we go. And then bring it up and making sure that it's on top of the hook. Okay, there we 
go. I'm going to put it down here. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of this Darlon. I'm going to take, this is going to be for the, the wing case. Uh, also, the wing case and also the, uh, the legs. I'm going to take about, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to measure this stuff. I'm going to take about 10 strands. Uh, this is about 12 strands of Darlon. I'm going to lay that in. Go back to about the three quarter mark. There we go. And cut off the excess. Okay. And then I'm going to take some purple dubbing, um, just some hairline. Purple. Um, not going to do a lot, maybe a one inch noodle. Uh, going to do a thin noodle. Uh, don't want to overdo this. Don't want to build up too much of a thorax here. You want enough and make it a little buggy here. I like it a little buggy. And then I'm going to take this Darlon that I've used for the wing. I'm going to capture that. I'm going to take that. Still move that, that out of the way there. And then I'm going to take this these legs, this Darlon, I'm going to separate it and try to make sure that it's even. Okay, that's about right. It's always tricky sometimes, and then I'm just going to take it and hold it back, wrap one, wrap twice, and I'm going to grab both of them and kind of wrap back so that those wings sit back, or those legs sit back, excuse me. And then I'll take my medium opal tinsel and wrap that over here and wrap that in front and then I'll just cut it like that All right, then I take it back and I grab both of them at the same time and I just cut it back to where the I could have made that wing case a little bit bigger and I just take that back right there I cut off some strands of like some hairs that are just flying from the there you go just kind of bend those wing cases those legs down a little bit cut the tail off the tail about the same size of the same length as the hook shank just like that and that's pretty much it that's uh, and then just whip finish here do the, do the tails very simple Betas pattern. I mean, it's just really effective too. Uh, you know, they love they love this pattern, and it's so great in so many different colors. Uh, you know, blueing olive, uh, put some amber, some some PMD. Um, but look at that profile. I mean, that's just slim, beautiful. Uh, yeah, if you look at that that profile, it's got a little bugginess on that the uh, on that um, that dubbing. But, I mean, it's, I think it's the proportions on this are just so perfect. Um, it's a good fly. So that's my uh, D-Rib Betas.